Okay, so our project is a shower power. It's a portable shower just for the homeless people. And the homeless people, it would just prevent diseases because that's one of the biggest things in Camden. Also, it would prevent the lack of hygiene because downtown, where the school district is, it's a lot of odors, I want to say. It's a lot of odors around our city. So we decided just for the water, we'll use Cooper Rivers water and filter it out just with that thing. And it will go through and go through our shower. So in the shower, this is how it looks. You want to pour? You can pour. Manny, can you hold it up, please? So, you got it? This is the mini version of the thing, I guess. Yes, it won't be this small, I promise. <laughs> and the water would just go right through. Where does it go after? All right, that's it. Where will it go after? It will be a drain here. Oh, okay. It would drain out, and the water would just be like getting reused but filtered. So this is our project, Thirsty Street, and the name came from the permeable concrete that we're doing for our project. And basically, it's regular concrete versus permeable, permeable concrete. And permeable concrete soaks up water versus regular concrete where it sits on top. This is good for Camden because it prevents flooding and hydroplaning. That's a huge title. That's it. So right now my partners Christine and Danesha are pouring water through permeable concrete where the water goes through and there are rocks and pebbles and cement which allow the water to go through. Okay, so my project is called Caught You. Um, my big question is, uh, how can the spy robot reduce the amount of unsupervised activities in this hallway? So basically to stop students from doing violence, school shooting, also to keep them in class because you know students use the abuse of water fountains and bathrooms. So our hypothesis was if the robot is able to move back and forth on top of the locker room from the water fountain to the bathroom, then it should be able to catch many unsupervised activities. And our materials was like, it wasn't even that much. It was just our phones, our laptop, the robot kit, and the batteries. So we, our research was if the cameras can keep away, keep an eye on students, visitors, or teachers, then the cameras can only stay in one spot. However, we can make moving cameras and it can cover more ground for any intruders. And the, this link was a website that about, was talking about a robot that can capture image and live photos and it can move anom anonymously. It's a perfect example of what, that we should have in our school a moving camera and right here is the view of the uh, basically the camera from the bathroom to the water fountain and here is an image of it catching students off task like there's the students on his phone there's some students at the water fountain and there's some students that's hanging around but the around the, in the hallways and our procedure was first we built a robot till it's complete and everything is working after that we built a cardboard phone holder and place it on top of the robot next we we code and move the robot with our phones and laptop. Then we experiment, experiment with it on the logger to make it go back and forth with the camera on it. And basically the camera will monitor both the water fountain and the bathroom. Then we will collect data on it catching people in the hallway. It's JS Robot from Cydia, Jeanette, and Shivaze. Our brief overview of our project is that we're building a robot that, that can program to help paralyzed people. The robot will be able to get, to get their needs and anything they need from this robot. So, as you can see, the robot is small, and it, it could it could walk, and it could open it open its arms to get objects that people can't get. Hello, my name is Taylor Morrell, and I'm with my partner Arcadia Jimenez, and we created a project called Lungs Over Time. Our project is based on how black and mouths are worse than cigarettes. We have three bottles to demonstrate how lungs are bad for how cigarettes and black and mouths are bad for you. We tested these products for seven days. The middle one is the clean one, the first one is the cigarette, and the third one is the black and mouths. So day by day, the cotton balls absorbed the tar and the cotton balls got darker. Um, our hypothesis was supported. Our hypothesis was supported because black and mouths are really worse than cigarettes. As you can see, the black and mouths have a darker tinger cotton ball, which means that the black and mouth has more, what do I say, has more tar. 
And for our air purifier, we have an air purifier to for secondhand smoking. So what you do is you turn on the fan to smoke directly into the fan, which the smoke hits the um, filter, and then the cotton balls trap all the, the smoke, and then it hits the dryer seats, and the dryer seats has detergent and bleach, and it's sent a scent, a good scent comes out. After that, we also had a bag to um to cover to capture smoke, and after we took it off, the um the smoke came out. We also asked 150 students about smoking, and they all in 20 125 chose mouths and 25 chose cigarettes. In Camden, 75,000 people live here, but 38,000. Okay, smoke. so um. Our project is bioplastic. Basically, bioplastic is a biodegradable plastic that takes two to four months to degrade into the earth. Unlike normal plastic, bioplastic will degrade faster and it's more, it's a natural resource so it's better for the earth. Normal plastic takes, normal plastic takes 500 to 1,000 years to degrade into the earth. While bioplastic takes two to three months to be degradable into the ground. So the materials we used to make our bioplastic was glycerin, cornstarch, vinegar, and water, which are all natural resources, which results in them being easier to be degradable. Our, our hypothesis was that we thought that bioplastic would, board, would be more beneficial to the earth, and it was right. We also re- oh. Um. <laughs> Our plastics down here are from worst, worst consistency to the best consistency. This is our first one. This is still jelly-like and it still feels like jelly. And this is our best one where it actually feels like plastic and we have got the shape of the bottle. Hey, so I'm here with Mo Dimes. I did this project with strawberries and we use aloe vera. And the aloe vera determine if the strawberries can save I'm sorry, if the aloe vera could save your strawberries from molding faster or shorter. And it turned out to be we had a negative hypothesis, meaning the aloe vera made the strawberries mold faster. So, you know, we had some, we got pictures and stuff right here. Uh, you know, we got that at the bottom. We took, it took, we took three days for each trial. Uh, you know, water. In a, in a water. My name is Crystal Montero, this is Tatiana and Siobhan, and this is our honeybee project. So, our project is about can honey help with your seasonal allergies. The experiment is for two weeks long and they had to take pills every six hours. The capsules is fish oil that's filled with raw honey, and specifically raw honey because it boosts your immune system by providing natural energy. and. It has antibacterial, antiviral properties that fight off sicknesses. As you can see with the data right here, we asked questions about their symptoms. 75% said it worked, 25% said it didn't work. Keep in mind, this can be done with male or female. And can be, um, you take oh. one teaspoon, one capsule, or candy by freezing it. That is our project, and I hope you like it. <laughs> so the name of our project was the Zupe Squeezer, a device created for children to limit mess and save money, and it was by Erica Muse, Rabria Pollitt, and Cashmere Winroy, which is myself. So basically what we created was a fun way for children to brush their teeth in the morning without making mess, which is our Zupe Squeezer, which we made different animals, but this one just happens to be a frog. And we found, our research found that children waste about an average of five to 10% of each toothpaste tube within brushing their teeth. And children use an average of three toothpaste tubes per year. So that's around 15 to 30% of toothpaste wasted each year. So we created this to save money and make less of a mess for children brushing their teeth. We created this for ages around three and up, children who brush their teeth. And this just gently slides all the toothpaste up and gets it all out. And that's our project. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Abigail. And I'm Siani. And we are the creators of the Clean Drainer. Clean Drainer is a strainer that was created to capture runoff trash. So, capture runoff trash and keep it from going to the sewer. So, to keep trash from going to the sewer, we create a strainer that will capture the trash but still allow water to go through. The Clean Drainer Friday product is supposed to be made out of aluminum net like material steel frame, a rectangular steel frame, and steel, a foldable steel candle. Okay, our project is about renewable energy and how the residents of Camden don't use renewable energy, and how the residents of Camden don't use renewable energy sources enough. The, uh, such as hydro, wind, and solar. Our prediction was to be able to generate enough renewable energy to power a device. We plan to achieve this by creating a bicycle power generator using a 12 volt motor and a couple of simple electrical components. As the bike spins, it rotates the motor shaft, creating an electrical current through the friction. The current created will, will get sent through our positive and negative leads, which then will power the device.